So all the AI stuff now, like I'm kind of experimenting with, and some of it's really easy to use, and some of it's not so easy to use, depending on how advanced you want to go with that stuff. Um, right. But when I'm like creating videos, like short clips for mainly ASC CQB now, I'm like sitting there for like four hours to get 20 seconds of film. Welcome, guys. I appreciate you being on. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah dude. appreciate it. So, uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you guys. Um, let me shout out the sponsors real quick. We got Skirmish and Jackal Tactical. Uh, Skirmish is the uh, the tracking system for all of your airsoft gameplay tracking, and especially for LARPers. If you guys are doing LARP events, you know story driven events. This thing has been amazing the last couple events. Uh, Balahack just used it. He had over 500 players using Skirmish. And then um, uh, the other sponsor, Jackal Tactical, they use it on their LARP events as well. And then 6mm Mandalorian used it at the uh, Galactic War, the Star Wars event he has in November. And there was like 300 people using it. Uh, and they love it because when they leave... You know, when they're done, you know, obviously it tracks in real time. They can see what's going on. But when they leave, when they go to the next event, it carries all of their stats with them, you know, uh, it's, you know, on their profile and that kind of thing. It's a really cool system. And then Jackal Tactical just joined as a sponsor. They are uh, up in PA. They have two storefronts and they have uh, fields and they also run events under Otherworld Milsim. And they're doing an event. Uh, in a couple weekends up in PA, I think it is, that um, is a one-day event, and they're using Skirmish for their event as well. Uh, if you want to find out anything on, on either of these guys, go to skirmish.net and jacktac.com. Jackal Tactical is actually doing a, an event at um, GTI in September. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, they, they capped the limit at uh 250 players so that people uh can actually get into the building and fight <laughs> so anyone that's been yeah. to gti for uh stone breakers or any big events uh where there's more than 400 people there you all know the main building in the middle gets so jammed up uh you're just it's a you can barely get into the doors you know so they wanted to cap it to kind of get give people more rain throughout the uh, some of these tight spots. So I thought it was pretty as, cool, as they should. Right, absolutely. I, mean, I, I, I feel GTI like the the GTI main it. main function of GTI is the or like I guess for me at least the the buildings are always the most fun just so you can run through that stuff. But usually yeah. we get stuck in the woods at most milsims, which is hilarious. <laughs> right. Exactly. So that one's in September. I'll be uh, promoting that one and announcing that one because I want to get right now they have they already started selling tickets for it. And um, I think they've only got like 30 or 40 people signed up so far. But you know how people are. They're going to wait till, you know, August to sign up for it. You know, if it's in September. But um, they have their they have links for it on their uh, jacktack.com. But I'm actually going to that one in September as a uh, media. So that's cool. Yeah, nice. Man. That'd be fun. So, and That's then, awesome. you know, as far as sponsor stuff goes, uh, shout out you guys for your grand opening. You guys want to talk about that real quick, and then we'll go into the history of the field and where you're at now. Sure. You want to go ahead, yeah. Chuck? Or you want me to yeah, do it? Uh, you, go, you go ahead. <laughs> well, the grand opening is going to be on Saturday, March 23rd, and Sunday, March 24th. I'm going to Go ahead. I mean, it's pretty obvious that like Saturday is probably going to bring the most of the majority of the people. Um, hours, to my knowledge, uh, right now are 10 o'clock. It's 10 a.m. is when it's going to open. And the end is going to basically just depend on how many people want to stay and how late people want to stay, I guess. Probably won't be like super late, but... Um, and uh, what... what <laughs> I'm trying to remember. We were discussing something a minute ago. And now I'm, lo I'm losing my train of thought. Go ahead and take up for a second, Chuck. Uh, I'll chime uh, in. So the uh, as you said, the grand opening is the twenty third. The opening hour is going to be ten o'clock. There's a a listed ending at six, but we're going to kind of go until people just get tired. Um, 
for those of that are listening to this podcast, there is a discount link that uh, I think Rock is probably going to list on the information mm -hmm. to give you a discount for if you listen to this podcast. Um, we're going to have uh, food out there. It's going to be a big thing. Um, rentals are going to be available. Uh, we have limited number of those, but we're going to be trying to pack as many people in as we can. The new arena is huge. It's going to be a great time. So. Yeah, I was going to actually pull that up on the screen. Where is, um, like, if I want to find out uh, the map, what is the, um, I'm going to look it up on maps so I could show people where it's at because some of it's fairly close because it's in a southern part of South Carolina, right? It's Florence. Uh, yeah, it's Florence, South Carolina. So oh, kind of mid, far east. Yep. So. Um, but it's uh, 2077. TV Road in Florence, South Carolina. Okay. I'll show you guys a map real quick. 2077? Yeah. yeah. What's it's the name of the road? very uh, TV Road. Like television? Yeah. TV Tower Road? No, just no, TV, just TV road. road. Oh, gotcha. Dude, I got a thousand things going on, which is crazy. I had to shut my entire brain off the other side of uh, this weekend's been crazy, or this last weekend and this week has been crazy so far, and I hadn't even made it to, to Friday yet. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Today's Wednesday. And matter of yeah, fact, that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast track this thing, so um, this this recording will come out this weekend. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah, That's so, awesome. Nice. Yep. So let me bring up. Uh, I'm going to share the screen real quick so I can pull it up for anyone that watches this. So if you guys are watching, uh, you can, or if you're listening, you can watch it and um, during this part, and you can see where uh, where I'm talking about here. Oh, yeah. So this is in. Oh. I'll zoom out so people can see where. Whoops. kind of an idea of where it's at in South Carolina and uh, okay yeah so you know what that's weird I thought Florence was south of Columbia okay no it's not no well, it's pretty much dead east right dude that is not far from me actually that's crazy yeah we're pretty we're pretty out there <laughs> well for me it's out there it's like a two hour drive for me I guess it's it? the yeah. same right yeah it's aren't two and a half in, hours for me aren't you oh, in North <laughs> Carolina Raven yeah, yeah. So okay. we're uh, Raven Thirteen's based on like Charlotte. So yeah, that's we're right. making that trip. Yeah, see, I am. Yeah, it's like almost due east from me. I'm over here in Simpsonville. Okay. Yeah. Nice, dude. I yeah, I, uh, I drive farther than that uh, on the daily for Uber. I ended up in uh, in Jesus a Christ. tiny um, town <laughs> in. North Carolina last week called Spindale, North Carolina. I've never even heard of it. it oh, yeah. Town. That's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, dude. Yeah, that's, that's the, that's sounds the, like, that sounds it, like my neck of the woods. It was crazy. Like the, um, the girl I picked up was like in her early 20s. She cried the whole – I picked her up in Chesney, and it was about a 40-minute drive or so, 40-minute drive, and uh, she cried the whole time. I felt so bad for her. Her, uh, her ex – had just died like three days before and that's where she was going to get some of his stuff and um like he od'd and she's telling me the story and she's crying i'm like oh geez I'm like i don't you know just listen but well, it, dude it's so hard to be an uber driver i think like, i feel like you're basically a therapist that behind the wheel really that's are what your job is <laughs> like, really dude, are yeah you're the unpapered therapist now <laughs> <laughs> For real. So uh, anyone going uh, or you know, kind of looking at this event or would be curious to go to this field, I, I really hi uh, highly suggest if you're close enough, get out there. And um, uh, it's not far from Myrtle Beach. Actually, one of the guys I'm talking with soon is, is a brand new airsofter. He's a uh, Army uh, Special Forces. I think he's retired Army. And... Um, also a bodybuilder. He just got into airsoft like a few months ago. And uh, bring um him. yeah, oh, so yeah, bring him on. yeah, it's uh 
uh, actually Houdini, which you guys might have heard of. I had him on the podcast a few times. He uh, he's out in Tennessee. He's a speed soft player. He builds a uh, high cap as he's building him one right now. But anyway, um, if you guys are in this area, fairly close, definitely um, check out Airsoft. Colum- are you calling it Airsoft Columbia again? No, no, Airsoft South Carolina CQB. Um, Airsoft, but we're South basically Carolina. just yep. That's right. Just we'll just say it the easy way and just say ASC CQB. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know what? I thought that's what, because uh, I think what I think it was Airsoft Columbia was ASC as well, right? Like it on the was a, and stuff. Yeah, okay. it just kind of worked out. Yeah, it did. So Airsoft South Carolina CQB is the uh, new field, and right here in this area for anyone that's uh, looking, and you can go to find out about tickets for this. Um, I will have a link on this video for that and i'll be promoting it through uh, instagram and all that um up until then so yeah and what is it how much is it uh if they use the link that we put up on the video 29 it's like 29 something it's just it's just under 30 bucks to uh yeah and that yeah, gives like them a 15% discount. yeah entry and gameplay and stuff whatever for that day yep that's awesome yeah, so you guys they, uh, have done some dry runs through it, right? Like oh, you guys yeah. have had people yeah. come in and play. Yeah. We've had uh we've changed that field probably about twenty times now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is uh it's it's uh yeah, it sounds like it it would suck because it does. <laughs> <'Cause you're> moving, <laughs> like the thing is Eric, I wish he was on here. Um, you know, his he's got a background in construction and his dad, who is like a lot older and these, they're just, they're beasts, man. They can just, like, they frame stuff up so fast, and I'm like, uh-huh. all right, you guys are like, this is ridiculous. And then they just have stuff thrown around, and they're like, all right, move this here, put it back together. Cool. It's like a Lego piece for them. That's cool. But um, for us, we're just like, oh, we got to move this wall again, and then starting <laughs> a game. All right, everybody run this game. Now nah, this sucks. Oh, God. Now we got to move or cut a hole here or whatever. So it's, it's cool because you can evolve the field however you want, which is kind of our thing you know especially for law enforcement is like they they can come in there and be like we want a hallway with you know a, a kitchen or a dining room or whatever and a, a wall or whatever here we can move things around to allow them to train in and then also make it an airsoft field so that's kind of the the cool thing that's that's the evolutionary part of this uh place in my right. opinion i mean i guess you could do it with a lot but we're willing to like tear it down and rebuild it and keep doing that over and over again so mm-hmm. people never get bored yeah, and, and for those that have been to Airsoft Columbia and remember the way we used to build things, having Eric and his dad come out there and building everything actually to construction grade spec, it's so much nicer because you don't have to worry about things falling apart and stuff like that. So, <laughs> oh, dude, those walls! I'm gonna I, I have to announce this publicly. If you run into that wall, if you're a player, you're gonna get hurt really bad the walls are <laughs> so, moving as, as i stated before the walls move <laughs> around but if you slide or run into those walls the wall is absolutely going to win those walls are like right. i mean they're 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 hard they're solid <laughs> I, yeah yeah good when, when we were moving from the last location to the one we're at now we had to stack all those walls up onto uh trailers and move them i know exactly how heavy they are you will bounce <laughs> right yeah it's it's gonna knock you right on over it's uh-huh. pretty crazy so go over um you know we mentioned airsoft columbia uh the history uh for for us on our end with trifecta airsoft the first time i went there was um uh, more than two years ago it's probably almost three years ago actually now and um i went there to film take pictures and the guys went you know jp coltrane and uh chris went there and played and um, they had already been there more than once and so this time i went with them and uh and filmed and everything i was able to go like walk through the field you guys actually gave me a uh, riot shield so i could go out on the field and kind of film while they're and i <laughs> i would stand right in the middle sometimes and i got shot a couple times in the back because you know somebody peeks a corner and i'm standing right there in the in the middle but um like right in the middle of the you know firefight or whatever i was trying to get some good video and stuff it turned out great it was a great field i loved how you guys ran it um you know with uh, sam was running it before 
and uh, you know it was great. I met I actually met him when I went there. I met him and his mom, and mm -hmm. uh, you know they were running the field, and um, so a little history on that. Uh, he he and his mom came over from the UK, and I can't remember exactly what made him start the field over there, but um, but they had uh, they had been running the field for a handful of years, I think, before. I showed up there to, you know, try it out. So originally the field came about because they had done a couple of outdoor events in the area and they just kind of wanted to start their own thing. There was really no big indoor fields nearby and that's kind of the direction that they wanted to go in. So that's kind of where that started. Yeah. And then when did it uh, close down and, and go over the history of that, why it closed down or when, and then, uh, how did this come about? Like what, what, what got you to where you're at now with this new field? So the reason we had to close down was due to some zoning issues that had come up. Um, zoning laws change. It's a thing that happens and it's always a Royal pain. But when it came about, we basically had to make the decision. We didn't have enough bathrooms based on the occupancy, and there's a few other discrepancies. Um, not a point, not enough points of egress, all kind of weird things. But So, basically, they were going to fine us to stay open, so we had to close down very suddenly, which really kind of sucked. Isn't but it weird, though? We, isn't it weird that uh, this is a common thing that I've heard? There, this is not the first field that has had an issue with zoning and the, and the specific thing about bathrooms. Yeah, uh, an occupancy. Oh, so dude. this thing is, it's not just in, uh, you know, really uh, law ridden states like uh, New York where it's hard to open stuff or whatever. Like this is, but that is where that happened with um, Full Auto Airsoft. They had the same issue with opening. I think it was um, Evic High Grounds out in, te in uh, Texas. I think they had a similar mm -hmm. type of issue. It might have been the, it's either the bathrooms or the, um, the sprinklers for the fire thing and which is a big you know it's very expensive and you know big thing of uh, for the code now obviously the fire thing is we understand that but the bathroom thing bro like for real like you can't have 50 people in a in a thing with one bathroom what who's got to take that uh, many shits okay <laughs> it's, it's, dude it's not even that the first building we tried to do this with like once uh raven i you know once we got involved um that we tried that first field and that was like a whole year of pretty much BS. Like they were like, Oh, you need this many bathrooms and this much plumbing done. And we're like, you know, 60 bathrooms for two people or whatever it was. It was like insane. And it's also like a super expensive, uh, costly thing. And I think I explained that kind of a little bit on the first podcast I did with you. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just, it's extremely crazy how much they like, we're trying. It's not as easy as just saying, "Hey, I'm going to go get a commercial building and build an airsoft field." It does not work like that. Like, if anybody's no. thinking that, please, for the love of God, save yourself a moment and go research exactly what is required. Right. Because it is a. Uh, it you will waste a lot of money and time trying to figure that out if you're on the fly. Absolutely. And that's the other crazy thing is, even when you're doing the research, you're not always finding everything you need. It took us a year. We're still learning things even now. Oh um, yeah. All these laws are so hard to get through and understand what exactly it is that you need. Mm -hmm. so. I'm not even sure that this... And, and another thing is, I don't know if it's because it's South Carolina. North Carolina is probably the same. I don't want to talk crap about the the county people, but those people are so <laughs> just so hard to get in touch with. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. They're, um, they, they're very hard to deal with. So it, that also goes from, you know, okay, we're going to open in a month. Well, we're, we hadn't gotten in touch with them for the first two weeks. So now we got to wait another two weeks and then another two weeks. And it's just, it prolongs your opening process like substantially. So, uh -huh. well, the one, thing too is, the one thing too, I've heard of, and this has happened, uh, where the field opens without that final go ahead, you know, inspection, uh, whatever kind of thing you have to do because they know they have what's done. Then they know they have everything done, but they don't have the final, you know, cause they can't get in touch with somebody and they're waiting weeks and weeks. And they're like, dude, we got to pay 
rent on this. We're leasing this land or we're leasing this bill. Like we got to open the doors. And so they'll open mm -hmm. and then somebody reports them and however it gets, however it gets found out and they, uh, and then they, the county slaps a fine on them. That's like some crazy amount, $10,000 or something like that. Oh dude, it's insane. Ours, ours was a, uh, so before we closed the last one down, it was a thousand dollars a day. Jeez. <laughs> that's nuts yeah it is yeah <laughs> that's crazy it, man. it's it, why we close the doors immediately it's, uh, <laughs> yeah that's so yeah that's, that's, a, it's, that's it's a whole expensive. process so f yeah for you guys to you know have that happen to the uh, old field and then it's taken uh raven i'm looking at your video i did with you for anyone that uh, wants to go back and, and and watch these or listen uh i had you on in february of 23 so it's just over a year ago. And yep. then um, Chuck, when I had you on, let's see. Airsoft. I actually yeah. watched the, the Chuck one. I can't remember if that was before I did the, or I think it was after you guys did that, that we did. Yeah, I did mine first and then you yeah. came around after. Yeah, so I had the indoor gameplay one when I went to the field in Airsoft Columbia was October of 2020. So that is, damn, that's almost, that is over three years ago. Okay, and then uh, the one I did with you, Chuck, about the field closing and all that kind of stuff, it was after it closed and you guys were looking for land. That was in September yep. of 22. And then it was much yeah. later, obviously a year later, almost a year. Well, no, about six months later that I had you on in February, um, Raven. So, you know, talking about this. So if anyone wants to go back and watch those, just uh, search the channel for Airsoft Columbia and then Raven 13, and you'll find those episodes. Yep. Yeah. A little more of the yeah, it's been, it, it, Yeah, it's been about 18 months or so, Yeah, give or take. So Since what? Other, how did you guys find? Um, so Chuck, how did you hook up with uh, you and Raven? How did you guys find each other? And how did this whole process for the new field start? Like who knew who and who got involved? And and how did you guys get the ball rolling? So Sam and Eric are the first ones that met up. Um, I don't really have a lot of the information on that, Keenan. If you want to chime in on that, uh, uh, feel free. I heard about Airsoft's uh, Columbia shutting down, and uh, I was on the phone at the time with Eric, and I was like, "Email him right now." <laughs> so, so we we talked. Well, me and him did have like a brief discussion about it, and then he contacted Sam, and then there was like a whole like conversation that I didn't hear. Um, again, I wish he was on here to kind of explain that, or at least Sam or somebody. But, um, and then after that, we all just kind of like talked. Um, and then we're like, well, what do you guys want to do? Here's what our ideas are, what we want to do. And then we just kind of met the team of Columbia and then kind of meshed that way. And it's been cool since, I mean, we've been trying to work like as much as we possibly can as a team to try to get stuff together, you know, and literally like throwing stuff at each other constantly until we're super annoyed and it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just like any other business, man. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, Nice. So. Yeah. Uh, after you know, we definitely could not have done this without Raven Thirteen coming in to give us a hand um, financially and otherwise. Keenan's been a huge support on like the social media side, mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. It, tried, it's been man. a blessing. So. I try to. I try to like not. I don't know. The, the thing with social media is like, I hate it, but you, I love it. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's like a love-hate relationship, and then uh, the the marketing stuff is like just fun for me, I guess. Um, I, I don't know why. Like most people that are in marketing that I meet on a daily basis are like, "Dude, I literally hate my life." <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm kind of in. Yeah, dude. Like most people that I've met, like I talk to a lot of people every day, yeah. um, clients and stuff like that, and like they're all like, "Dude, this is this is freaking awful." And I'm like, "Wow." And I'm like secretly in the back of my head, like. Man, I'm having so much fun posting about airsoft stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe it's because what you gotta enjoy what you're selling, you know, like, or whatever you're doing. I was doing, just gonna so. say, yeah, because if you get into, you know, if you actually did marketing or you know started your own marketing company and you get requests for 
just crazy weird stuff that you do mm. not support and you don't want to do and you're like but i can't turn down the business or i don't want to because then they're going to post about it or what you know like you're stuck you're kind of stuck in the middle um yeah i agree like when i post about all this stuff i love it so i, I love the marketing part of all these people i deal with and everyone i talk through the this community you know it's it's been good it's crazy, man, because, uh, you know, I, I started off like with, I mean, we've talked about the, I mean, people can refer back to the last video, kind of where I got started with Airsoft and stuff, but um, I was huge on like trying to make content. And now I have this new role in this in this company that I didn't sign up for that I, I'm stoked to do, <laughs> but I have zero, I literally have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's, it's like content creator marketing research civilian tactical training uh dude <laughs> like, <laughs> right. and, and i'm just like what title is this and then uh you Type know it but it's working out like, gtp it'll give you a, it'll give you a, a badass title okay that's the thing is like all the ai exactly right so all the ai stuff now like i'm kind of experimenting with and some of it's really easy to use and some of it's not so easy to use depending on how advanced you want to go with that stuff um right. but when i'm like creating videos like short clips for uh you know raven or mainly asc cqb now um is going to be my my primary focus i have other guys to do the raven stuff um they it, it, it's at like i'm like sitting there for like four hours to get 20 seconds of film i'm like okay here's 20 minutes and now i've gotten a two minute video and it took me four hours to do this yeah <laughs> Welcome because I have no idea. For real. So, uh, I, as much as I, I want to take the, the credit and be happy about that, like I'm I, I'm a very, 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 very mediocre uh, videographer. So uh, if anybody watches Same my here. videos and they're professional, then don't judge me because I'm doing the best <laughs> I can to make it look cool. <laughs> yeah, that's one and thing when I first started editing was uh, I was going, okay, now I understand why movies or TV shows, you know, high quality oh, productions – why they do storyboards, why they do written scripts, why they do why they do practice, why they do like there's a lot of hours and a ton of work that go into one scene and that scene is not you know the camera doesn't start rolling until everyone knows everything about that part and about that scene and where the angle of the ca like every detail where the angle of the oh, camera, it all matters. Where, what's the background what are we going to place here you know product placement uh you know branding if you want to do that kind of thing in the in the in the shot like what the lighting like all of these things are already known and set up you know makeup costume whatever before that camera turns on and you and i we turn on the camera and go okay what am i going to do you know we take five minutes to kind of practice what we're saying and then you know three hours later we're going okay i, I have to edit all of this to get no, two dude. minutes <laughs> the the thing is i have a background in music as well like i mean with band stuff and i've worked with uh studio one and pro tools and logic pro. i've worked with a lot of different like doll softwares to to do music right so i was like oh i this i'm good at that i can mm -hmm. do this this is fucking totally different pardon my language but it's totally different yeah like, you, you just can't uh i i don't know man because most of the videos i'm going to put out have zero audio because there's a guy in the background like farting or something or saying <laughs> something crazy and i'm like dude this is the dopest shot ever and they're like Pfft. You know, and it's like, oh man, gotta put a sick song over that now. <laughs> or somebody says, I, you know, they say uh, something about somebody's mom or something in the background. And you're like, I yeah. can't have this here. So oh, that's funny, um, dude, for real. Yep, <laughs> it's bad. So I, I yeah, think yeah. with like when when it's more like staged and scripted, like I feel like it would it would be better. But you can't with this kind of stuff, especially. You can't even like. There's no way to stage this. Like I like especially if you're making like if you're like somebody like. Uh, admin airsoft or, or whatever i don't know if you ever talked to him um yeah I've but had one a couple times yep yeah i think i yep. yep yep so he he does some cool videos i i mean like but a lot of his videos are not you know they're not like narrated they're like he's gonna go do this thing that yeah. he's, he's playing the game and you don't know what he's gonna do and i don't think at the time he knew, he's like i got an idea what i'm gonna do but just like all of us that play we're like let's go clear this room yeah, <laughs> we don't know right. how to to anticipate what's behind the door and then being like, what am I going to say once I get shot? Because if it hurts bad enough, you might say something you might regret on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, welcome to the world of editing, man. It's like uh, oh, yeah. when you start doing GoPro videos, forget it, man. If you don't have a, a computer, you know, like a high-end gaming system that, you know, with a with great graphic graphics card and, you know, badass RAM and, and processing unit, you're just, you, you're going to have to do what I've done for the last four years with this thing is I plan, I have to plan my video editing around all other kind of stuff because once I... I, I, when I load the, the video into the program, I can start editing it pretty quickly, but it's still kind of processing. So I can edit while it's oh, processing, yeah. but it lags. Okay. And if I don't want to deal with that lag while I'm editing, then I wait for it to get fully done processing. Okay. Well, if I have an hour video or two hour or three hour video, you know, it's going to take a good 30 minutes for my computer to process this thing before I can even touch it. So. I have to figure out, okay, what else am I going to do? What, so I do all kind of other things. I've had to manage, you know, balancing all of that in between uh, the the slowness of this thing. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't bought a new yeah. one. My son just actually uh, texted me last week. He's like, hey, I'm getting rid of my um, gaming PC. I bought a new one. It's being built. Uh, you want to, you know, do you want this one? And I was like, hell yeah. He's like, okay, I'll sell it to you. I was like, sell it? No. You can give it, okay? <laughs> no, but anyway, it's a lot faster. Like when I loaded a, uh, videos into his when he was here, um, it was ready to run in like a minute, like right away. Nice. So, yeah. Anyway, so I'm, I'm about to upgrade. But yeah, editing is, it, is a bitch. Do you have an idea what you're upgrading to? Actually, I don't remember. He sent me a message on, uh, I think it was on Discord. I'll have to look later. But um, so what I have now is I have 32 gigs of RAM, which is good. But um, it's the older style of RAM. It's the DDR3. Um, it's not the newer whatever stuff. The processor I have is a, it's uh, an AMD. Uh, I think it's a 3.1 quad core. Um, it's not terrible. But I'm going to tell you what the, the bottleneck for mine is. The graphics card is a little older. It's a 1050. It's a NVIDIA 1050. It's the, the, you know, the GeForce. And then, but I have an old hard drive. So it's a, an actual disk, spinning disk hard drive. So his has the, uh, you know, solid state hard drive. And um, it's like a 3000, I can't remember what, 3000 model of the, graphics card right uh, I, well i'll sell you this alienware that i'm using right now <laughs> for 1500 bucks deal oh, your yeah. lifetime <laughs> <laughs> is it a piece is it like a console unit or i mean a uh, tower or a, a laptop no this is a laptop but it's a 3070 freaking powerhouse that i don't need um i bought it last year for 2400 dollars, and i really don't i just i don't i have no games no on it. Like, it's literally nothing. I use a all Mac stuff. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So, like, this this is what I'm specifically using for the uh, GoPro webcam because this actually listens. To, they talk to each other. Right. This does not talk to my GoPro because uh, Apple is, you know, Apple. Proprietary. But yeah. for editing videos, music, audio, this is, this is my thing. I mean, I have... This plus a you know a um, a solid state drive outside of this that I run like all my monitor stuff. I don't really need a gaming PC. Uh -huh. I bought this and I was like, this is perfect for somebody who does what you do or streaming or like yeah doing some crazy stuff. And then I played some like I think I downloaded like Modern Warfare on here and I was like, this is sick. I'll never use this. I have an Xbox. <laughs> Twenty four hundred dollar tax write off and then um, and uh -huh. then now I'm like you know. It's useless. It's just kind of paperweight. I've used it probably eight hours total. So I oh, regret wow. that decision big time. For yeah, sure. I paid it off. I did a did a credit buy on this, and I was like, yep, now I'm going to sell it for $1,500. So if anybody's <laughs> looking for an alien where I have it. I got you. Yeah, post it in, the, uh, post it in our Discord, man. We have the um, buy, sell, and trade section in there. Mm -hmm. Post it on there. For sure. For real. Okay, I'll give All it a right. shot. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I wasn't getting a free one for my son, quote unquote free, uh, mm. I told him, "Can I make payments on it?" <laughs> oh man, dude! I mean, built PCs are just as just as. I mean, that's 
probably better, honestly. Like, I feel like uh, a lot of people hate Alienware anyways, but this thing uh, is a freaking monster in my opinion. But Well, I'm going to tell you what, when people started disliking or, you know, not, they, they were like, the big controversy came over when um, Dell bought Alienware because people hated yeah. Dell. So yes. back in I don't the day, like, like ga gamers, like anyone that that knew about PCs or would build their own PCs or gamed any kind of thing, uh, when Dell started pumping out their, you know, crappy, like fully loaded with a bunch of malware crap in it, uh, you know, when you, when you got out of the box, that kind of stuff, we were all like, dude, you can't upgrade these. You can't do anything to them. Nobody's going to buy this shit. I bought a... We used, me and my buddies used to, uh, we used to build our own back in the late nineties and Micron was a, was a company that was doing, they were kind of catering to the gamers. So they would build giant towers so you could put beefy, you know, power supplies in there and a big ass motherboard. You could had all these different PCI slots and stuff and hooking all kind of shit up. And of course that technology was kind of way ahead of the monitor technology so back then we still had crts that you know a, a 19 inch crt uh 19 inch screen was about 80 pounds a no shit. oh yeah or it was a brick pounds it was crazy <laughs> yeah i mean even when i was coming up with alienware i was running linux they didn't have there was no uh they weren't even running like microsoft or anything that i mean i don't know the processor i wouldn't like that into computers when i was first uh I was like, I used to go to the skate park, and they all had this like gaming center up front, which is the first time I've ever seen like a like a like a what do you call it, like an internet cafe or like where oh, yeah. people go and literally play land, video games. Land cafe. Yeah. Yeah, land cafe. Yeah, land I'm looking party. for that's that's the right word. Yeah, something like that, land party type thing, and you'd pay to play these elaborate Alienware computers. All of them had like uh, Linux, which I had never seen before, and I was like, this is the most crappy operating system i've ever seen which a lot of people are going to hate on me for saying that but i didn't understand it at the time i sure. was like still uh using you know probably windows 98 or whatever, like whatever <laughs> right. about it dude yeah, yeah. so like linux looked like a, a different language to me and then when i yeah. got on mac for the first time i was like this is what person built this like <laughs> this is yeah. this is this is weird but they tried to make it like easier i feel like with mac I'm just so used to the interface, man. Like it, yeah. it, it's Alienware is great. You know, this thing has Windows 11. I have zero idea how to use Windows 11. Um, so trying to get into this podcast today as the same. This is the same computer I used last year. This is like right when I got it. I still couldn't remember how to open up Discord. I was like, "How do you do that?" It was like already open. It's like, oh, it doesn't <laughs> on its own. Cool. Nice. It, it's 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 backwards, but well, the uh, Macs are great for. All that stuff you're doing now because mm -hmm. they're a, they're such a solid system. They don't have the issues like you'll never get a blue screen of death uh, <laughs> that you get with Windows. You know, <laughs> you get the loading screen of death with Mac. It's like a wheel. It's like once okay. that starts happening, like and then you're like, ah, oh, this is that. That happens usually when I'm like doing music stuff. Though I haven't had it happen with video editing just because I'm not pushing this to the. I mean, this little laptop here is is. It's great when you're running external okay. hardware to make it run good. Without the external hardware, I would never open up After Effects in that ever. <laughs> really? It would like it would, blow, <laughs> dude. I mean, this this is an M2 chip, and it still uh, still has a little loading issue sometimes. I'm like, all right, that's that's not a good sign. The computer's getting hot. Let me plug it in and do stuff. But it's gonna work out, man. I'm gonna continue to edit videos and try to get better at it. So hopefully, I, I I'm look like I'm somewhat capable of knowing what I'm doing when you guys watch them later on. <laughs> right, you do promo promo videos. I mean, the good thing is the way uh like marketing stuff has gone. Uh, you really only need to focus on some short, like condensing your videos to like mm. the short form style and uh. You know, to to kind of get your message across, it's it's a lot easier to to do shorts. Um, Dude, shorts are the way to go. Absolutely, real. I think that like thirty second, two minutes tops, and two minutes is like long. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been explaining that to Eric. Eric's like, why are these so short? And I'm like, listen, because your attention span. Well, let's look at the attention span of the average person. These is like thirty seconds. It's been like that yeah. for years, but it might even be less than that now. You click on something, and it's just this like holy crap, this is crazy. Yeah. You're like, oh, wow, that was cool. I want to go look at their page now. If I am watching something and it's like me talking for 
20 minutes about a video are like a very slow, mm -hmm. like this guy's about to take this room, but he talks about taking this room for 20 minutes in airsoft, like with his buddy, like, oh, we're about to do it. Looks around the corner, nobody's there. Oh, we're about to do it. I don't want to, I get bored. I'm like, yep. just do it. Swipe. You know? Yep. Well, the I, I thing mean, is, but, yeah. it's not, it's like our attention span hasn't, you know, like a lot of people say it, how bad it is, and it's, oh, it's terrible that our attention span's getting lo uh, lower or whatever, but it's, I, I feel like it's not a bad thing as far as but what's happened is people have gotten really good at editing videos mm. to make their point in that 15 seconds. And it's super only, good. Yeah. And it's very I like good. That. Not, only that, not only that, but you got think, uh, apps like TikTok and things like that where you only have like a two minute cap and that everybody's kind of gotten used to gathering that information that fast. Yeah. That was the pandemics. Uh, that, that's why I really hate COVID because it's uh, <laughs> it, it basically destroyed everything I ever thought was real about media. Like I was like, people get on TikTok and started dancing and winning, you know, thousands of dollars from all their views somehow. <laughs> it's right. like what? What is that? Like I'm watching this dude like pick his nose and make a million dollars, and I'm like sitting here like what? 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 What is this? But they did it. I mean, they did. They figured out how to how to captivate uh, attention in, in, in two seconds of really yeah. good editing, whether it was on that or everything else, and it worked out. Well, it's like this one oh. I saw um, recently that it's been out for a while, whatever. But this uh, this one guy that uh, his TikTok I don't even know the name of the channel, but he uh, became very popular at TikTok during COVID and stuff. But he does uh, so. This one video he's got um, him. So the first scene is him looking at, he's opening up the, um, like, unwrapping a Whopper, right? A Burger King Whopper hamburger. So he, he's, uh, he opens that, and then the other scene is it cuts to a guy, like a carpenter, outside with a table saw, getting ready to cut, like, a two-by-four with a chop saw, okay? And um, so he cuts it, and, you know, of course, you see all the sawdust going everywhere. And then this dude picks up his... Whopper or whatever, and takes a bite, and there's like all this sawdust in the, you know, on his burger, and it's right. you know he's like choking on it, it's it's spewing out of his mouth. It goes back to that guy, cutting this you know another piece of wood, and back to him, and he's like giving a thumbs up, like yeah, this is a good burger, you know. I think the I think the um actually the video was this guy um that was doing the wood cutting was cutting a piece of wood, and then he cut a Whopper in half. With the chop saw, <laughs> yeah. So and this guy is eating. It makes the the way he edited it made it look like he's eating that whopper that he cut in half with this chop saw, and so and it's got all this sawdust. So it's a it's ten seconds. Yeah, and it's it it makes this point like there's no talking, there's no, but because of how it's sequenced, you uh you get you understand it, and it's really funny. And I'm like, holy, like you can relate. You know, it's very relatable. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, people get, people got super creative. I, I'm, I'm like still stuck on the epic meal time. Like maybe I'm just I might be a little special. <laughs> I just, I'm just epic meal time was my favorite thing, and I and like yeah. when they started doing those videos, I was like, this is amazing, and now it's beyond that. Like it, it's crazy. Oh yeah. I don't even know if that thing still exists or not, but I have no it was idea. funny. So what are you guys? Uh, so you got the you got the grand opening coming up. Uh, you mentioned something about the law enforcement stuff. Have you guys reached out to local law enforcement for using that as training? Uh, like, how did you go about that? Um, sure, there's a lot of fields around the country that would like to open up their options if they had that. You know, like what um, what do you have to do? Was there certain stipulations as far as like um, the construction of the walls? Because don't they use uh, simulation rounds, which hit yeah, harder uh, than, than well, airsoft? Didn't you served and uh, did you guys ever use UTMs or or anything like that? No, we used uh, um, back when I was in. We were using uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Lar um, Lars, I think. Um, laser. The it, it's. Anyone that's, uh, if you've ever seen it, and um, there's a scene in Heartbreak Ridge where they use the uh, that system. I think it's called Lars. Laser or something, something. But uh, we have these, uh, like a thing that goes over your, all of your equipment and it drapes over your chest. It's like the laser tag stuff, but it's real right. accurate. It's real specific. It's got little receivers all over it. 
and um, and then we use uh, blank rounds, and we put the protective end in the in the M16s, and then it has like a laser thing that that they hook onto there <clears throat> that makes it real accurate. So, and that's what we used for training. So we didn't that's we only used it a couple times. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, sim rounds. I'll tell you. Uh, from the experience, I mean, it, you, I don't know if you guys know they uh, the ATF made it not purchasable for people like me and you now if you're oh, a civilian. Okay. Um, however, I'm not going to go into too much about that. But anyways, they uh, let's just say I, I've used them around, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't damage plywood as bad as you think it would, especially the ones that that bust open. There's different um, there's different kinds of of, of stem munition i mean you got all these other alternatives now as well unit solutions uh, i don't know if you've heard about them they came out they made it's almost like a that's like an airsoft kind of version i don't i wouldn't even call it that i haven't got a chance to use them i have contacted unit solutions to get some of their credentials to see if i can get one of their their guns out to be able to like test it and see if what the real difference is because i've done both blue bolt stuff with utm and um, and, and now, you know, with airsoft and then a couple other, uh, training rounds that I've tried, but dude, at, uh, at that, you know, are you going to Thunderdome by any chance? The mall game from Lion Claws. Uh, have no, you been out there? I, I haven't. Okay. Been, so no, I haven't, I don't have any plans for it. They've definitely trained in there and this will give you an idea. So there's like powder round, like these little, like weird, they almost look like paint rounds. And there's like blue and white, or not blue and red powder, like all over glass in there. And I'm like, okay, if this is sim rounds. There's not even like doing anything to the glass. Right. So they oh, wow. bust on impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, and yes, it doesn't feel good. Of course, it's going to hurt sure. a lot worse, you know, but it's not a hard, the object is not like going through you or something. It's just, it, it's the impact in which it had, but like on uh, standard plywood, it's probably just going to dent it slightly like airsoft. I don't, yeah. I don't see it doing much more damage really. I mean, if you're like shooting a corner of something, you ever watch like guys that are like feathering their triggers and like blowing chunks of wood off the corners of plywood. Yeah. I'm sure sim rounds would do that. Also, if you're, if you're sitting there just like hitting one slight part mm -hmm. of a corner, like where it's going to chunk out wood and stuff, but sure. I've never actually tried that. Usually like, Sim rounds are really expensive, um, and you're not really trying to waste them purposely. Yeah, yeah. You're not, <laughs> you're not try trying to, to purposely. Piece of wood. No, but, no. I, yeah. I, the only thing I've ever done with sim rounds, the test stuff, is like uh, those, like the rotating irises, like especially the cheap Chinese ones that people are using for their nods, which I'm highly against. Um, I've I've tried everything, and there's a couple cheap one alternatives that work, but shooting those with sim rounds, and you watch that glass explode, and you're like. No, nah, I would never use that. Right. Then somebody's like, oh, use this ballistics version. Okay, cool. The same Chinese glass that claims ballistics. You shoot it with airsoft and it cracks. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Right. Oh. But, uh, so when you guys contact uh, these, these law enforcement agencies or whatever to tell them or you you know send an email, however you get in contact with them, do, you, do they ask for uh, – are there requirements that they have as far as like how it's set up and – not uh, what's not so much right now we're still kind of in the beginning stages of that part of it mm -hmm. um and, and our other partner chris has kind of been the one the point of contact for that but so far they haven't made any requests as far as that um they have asked about different equipment options and things like that but we're going to be moving forward with that more in the near future so awesome a lot of it's just reaching out to the community, I mean, or the police community, you know what I mean? Like, being able to reach out and be like, hey, we have uh, we have this facility, this is what we're about, and this is what we can do for you, you know, this is what we can offer you at the moment. Uh, we're trying to upgrade that and bring more to that at some point, but um, it, 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 we are at the very beginning. So, I mean, in Columbia, we had a better... We were right beside Richland County uh, Sheriff's Office, so that oh, was super okay, easy. Yeah. Hey, come over and check this out. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> we'll check it out. But now it's like, hey, uh, do you want to drive an hour and 30 minutes to come check this place out? Well, we don't really have time. Okay, cool. Well, we have to like schedule it all, too, to get them out there. So Gotcha. Um, a lot well, of times, well, like for other fields, I would just reach out, dude. Like That's the biggest thing is reach out to every mm -hmm. every department you're interested in trying to get in there. Yeah. They are looking for training places too. That's All of them are. Say. Oh yeah, there's yeah. a need for it. Mm -hmm. 
And it's not just the police. We've also been in contact with like the fire departments and things like that that want to use our arena as like a smokehouse. Oh, okay. No, so, which is really interesting. I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're professionals, okay? They're not going to let it burn I, up. I'm just, I would just, no. I mean, <laughs> so, I think they would so use like actually, a fog machine. We actually, yeah, we did actually talk to them. They just basically use uh, an industrial version of fog machines. Right, right. So. Yeah, just to, to navigate, like learn how to navigate in their all, their full gear, full equipment, uh, dragging yeah. a body or dragging a hose through there or whatever they, you know, the, 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 the tools and stuff. Uh, my son went through. Um, one of my my younger son went through um, fire firefighting. He he was certified as a firefighter. He just uh, couldn't find a an opening around this area, and he didn't want to you know move or whatever or relocate. So, but he has all that training. I I watched a lot of that stuff. It's pretty cool to see. And that, that's another thing about the evolution uh, phase of this field is like we can we can ask them. Hey, do you guys want like a a hallway with whatever you want yeah. and then you're going to smoke it out anyways and then go figure it out so that's i would love to watch that stuff but mm -hmm. I, I that's we haven't done it yet but it should be really interesting well speaking of watching the uh, stuff that goes on the field do you guys uh do you have uh cameras throughout the field do you have uh we're working like on webcam that. type of stuff okay yeah we are working on that um in fact i'm going to be trying to get a couple of cameras installed within the next week so we got something to be able to record during the uh, the grand opening event. Awesome. So we didn't say anything about how this place is an old Harley Davidson dealership. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. So like the, it's, it's, massive. It's, it's actually pretty sick. There's like a huge HD in the middle, but anyways, there's cameras already there. What? So there's like CCTV hookup already there, which is kind of perfect. I don't know if the one that's hanging down in the middle of the arena is actually a... Uh, if that's a the bulb thing, is that a 360 cam or is it just a or is it a rotating camera? I think it's a rotating. They're, they're I, high I, dollar. I gotta cameras. get up there. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're they, definitely. They just left them, dude. They just completely were like, I guess we're Harley Davidson. We don't need these high dollar CCTV things. Well, they're they might be outdated. Maybe they're getting the the newer stuff for their newer building or something. You know. Yeah, probably. But that hey, whatever. The outdated's right. fine with me. <laughs> For yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, we're working on trying to figure out how to integrate all that to our system. Yeah. So. Oh, that's he has like a whole a whole CCTV section in the building. Like there's like a whole like place behind where the staging area is now that's got like our camera stuff, which I think should we'll probably move that around at some point if we can. But I'm pretty cool at that the, uh, I'm trying to look at the find the building of from the road. Can you see it from the road? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right on. So there. I'm on the map uh, thing, and it looks like a big, uh, um, you know, Google Maps doing the uh, the uh, yeah the, the it's like it'll a have a QVC bunch of glass or something across. The oh, would you like would you like to see the building and like yeah. actually see? Okay, like a little quick walk through. Go to the uh, uh, ASCCQB uh, Instagram. So that's at ASCCQB, and then it's like the first video ever posted, and you can see the oh. entire walkthrough. Well, let me pull that up on screen yeah. so I can show people. Cool. Yeah, that'd be sick. It, there's no uh, there's no uh, obstacles or anything in there yet. It's just an empty building, yeah. so just letting you know. Yeah, so yeah, to give cool. you an idea, the, the, the layout that we're trying to do, the first section that you're going to see is going to be a very obvious. Uh, we want that to turn into a pro shop. And then you'll see us kind kind of navigate through and you're going to see like the staging area and out into the warehouse area. This new, new this new location is, so you've been to the old field mm -hmm. and that, that, that field was roughly 8,000 square feet. Um, this new field is 26,000 square feet. Wow. That's big. Uh, and that one that you're looking at right there is actually the latest video. So it'd be the first video it actually does a good walkthrough for you. Oh, um, oh, and it, me, yep. Yep. So the go. very first one. Yep. And that gotcha. was before we put anything in it. So. Okay. Hopefully this. Yeah. You can kind of get an idea of how that, like that's the old HD showroom. And then if you look at the middle there, when we, when it pans over, you'll see the giant Harley Davidson logo or it's not a logo, but it's like HD. You see it. Yes. That, yeah. Awesome, down in the floor. Dude. That's pretty sick. That awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's great how big this is, though, and open. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, love yeah. it, man. Absolutely love it. What? Yeah. Well, we've got some real big plans for this place. I mean, yeah, we yeah, just got to keep it open. we got room in here to do all kind of stuff, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I'm not gonna lie. I want that front area to look like Evic. Oh, yeah. I want it to look like or an like, Evic showroom. I want it to look like Blackstone, but without the customer service. Never mind. I, I'm not. <laughs> <a dude. laughs> what um? So what about the lights? How did you guys? Did you have to do anything to protect the lights? Uh. Well. <laughs> So hold on, there's Wait. that, oh uh, god, I, I, how do you share stuff? Uh, share the screen? Uh, yeah, because I could, well, I can't even do it on here. The, we just had a light shot out the other day. Hold on, I might be able to send this to we, you, actually. We, 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 went, we went into tradition. It's the first time we were on a game, that we had a light shot. Out. So, so we so haven't protected just... the lights, to answer your question, no. Um, <laughs> and we're finding out really quick that we're going to have to uh, definitely yeah. protect those lights. Um, but it... It definitely it's going to yeah, require you can send some it to kind me of on the uh, on the um I mean, it, one second guys yeah see if you can get it to him real quick I was trying to scroll and find it it's like it's just a quick video he like pans over and shoots and then you just see a light fall and you're like oh that's not good we gotta fix that oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well because some of those are fluorescent uh, what, yeah and they have that like powder stuff in them that you're not supposed to breathe in and. You know, I just, uh, I know that it was an issue on uh, some fields where they had to, like, do some, because they had, like, low-hanging lights in some areas uh, that they had to remove or whatever. But it looked like when you walk through there, you didn't, they didn't really have too many of those that were, like, hanging too low you had to get rid of. They're all about the same height as far as how low they're hanging. Um, yeah. So like the there's bucket lights and then there's fluorescent lights and we're planning. I mean, again, I say planning. I'm gonna say that loosely because we do this stuff's expensive, right? So we're we're really trying to get that funding, but we want a LED freaking everything. That way, mm -hmm. if you want a green, you want a Christmas colored airsoft arena for Christmas, we can just make it red and green. Yeah, we can change. We we're gonna do that. It's just um, right now we're it's you know we might end up having to take all the fluorescents out. And not even put anything there, and just leave the bucket lights up because those are protected for the most part. Yep. Um, for now, yeah. and that'll darken it up, and tracers will look cool anyway. So that's that's, that's a, a cool idea, thing. Yeah, actually, yeah, just remove all the fluorescence. Yeah. We'll have to see where where they because I mean, dude, it got dark. We've already done some lights off games in there, and it is it is dark. I'm sure. It is, it, there's no windows. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Real and dark then, in there. I don't want to give away too much about the field uh, for those who have not been able to drive out and see it, but there are some uh, very interesting traits about this field as far as like how we designed with plexiglass. Hmm. Now, I'm there's X's. If you look at that last video I posted, you'll actually see some of the like they're like this window, and you'll see an X on it because it's it's see through. So you'll like pop around a corner and see what you think is a person you shoot it and it's plexiglass and you're like wait i can't shoot through this yeah it makes you like you guys can look at each other but you can't shoot so there's a lot of like really cool things we're trying to do with that too that i haven't seen done before nice. i'm sure people use plexiglass but like we're it's not i don't even think plexiglass is what it is like polycarbonate stuff mm -hmm. right yeah yeah i mean it's the Lexan. most popular one that i know of is uh in lexan speed soft um you know they use like the uh, tournament style games like NSL, mm -hmm. Speed QB, those kind of things. They have the uh, Snake, and then they have uh, Plexi. So they'll mm -hmm. have like an actual oh, yeah. barrier there that's a that's a Plexi wall. Uh, where I'll tell you them. what, they spend some money on that stuff, man. Have you ever yep. looked at a sheet? The the uh, they're like a hundred and something dollars a piece, I think. Oh, at Lowe's. it's ridiculous, bro. I bought so I put a, a TV outside on our deck, right? Oh yeah. And I built Plexi. so I bought a cheap little twenty four inch TV. And I built my own case. I've looked at outdoor rated cases for TVs. They're extremely expensive. Okay. And I said, mm -hmm. man, I could build this, whatever. I'll just build some kind of cheesy little thing. And it'll be, I've got, you know, leftover two by fours from job sites and stuff like that. I'll build a little frame and frame in like a piece of plexiglass over it and then clear caulk, you know, clear seal it, silicone. It'll be fine. So I looked at plexiglass and I'm like, holy bro, no. So I mm -hmm. bought this, uh, I found some kind of alternative that's like, I think it's a, a 16th of an inch. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, super it's thin. Cool. And it comes in a pack of like three. And it was very cheap. I bought it on Amazon. And it was just the right size I needed. So I put all three together and sealed them, make sure there's no, you know, like air bubbles mm -hmm. so it wouldn't look weird or whatever and distort the screen. And it's fine. Yeah. It's been fine. I've had it out there for four years. 
It's been great. Is it, are you gonna noticing like a yellow haze? That's the only thing that. Well, no, not I so guess. far. Not so, so far. You probably got you probably got acrylic if it was really cheap, and acrylic that's really what it doesn't. Is. That's what it over. is. It's okay. A, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. it is brittle. Um, like if you bend it, to, it'll yeah. flex, but it it will snap. It's real brittle. Mm -hmm. Okay, it sounds like it's probably acrylic then. Yeah, that's what um, it is. That plexi stuff, uh, I, I don't know, man. It's like a hundred and some dollars a sheet it's for the, the big sheets. Yep. And so we're really trying to find some cool uses for that to to where people can players can like look at each other and be like, oh, I'm gonna get you, you know what I mean? But you have to. Then it's like it, what's creepy about it is you're like looking at a guy <laughs> through this plexiglass and you're like, I can't shoot him, but right here where the corner is, you can shoot him. You know what I mean? So, but if you run that way, he's gonna he's gonna duck behind cover. It gives you like a really odd sense of like, oh crap, I have to do this now. <laughs> like, he can see you, you can see yeah. him, and you're yeah. not ex and he's not exposed, right? Exactly. But he has the. I mean, if you're running around that corner, you have to take cover somewhere. So both of them would technically have to figure that part out, or like use the yeah. plexiglass as a way to um, see each other where they're going or whatever. So but then it gets like blocked. Dynamic, off. yeah. Oh yeah, I like it. Use I, some I, I think we to kind of get to the guy. Yeah. 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 And it's cool for viewing too for like officers like if they're doing their training stuff in there they'll be able to just stand behind the plexiglass while yeah. I mean I'm I'm not worried about a sim round going through that. Exactly. But, um yeah. That's pretty cool. So, okay. Oh yeah. So you guys Fun got stuff. enough room in there. It's a big building. Um I'm I'm really glad you guys got something like that. That is uh it's pretty amazing, man. Holy cow. And you put a lot yeah. of wood in this place and structures and yeah, and up. it's also been helpful. The owner of the building, he look, he uh, actually lives right there next to it, nice. and he's been very, he's been working with us a lot with mm -hmm. trying to get things in there and get things set up, and he's been very patient with us. He understands what we're doing. He likes what we're doing, and he's been doing a lot to try to give us a hand with that, so. Nice. Now, are you guys, uh, your location there, is it close to, um, a, a, I know it's in Florence, but is it close, like how far of a drive is it for most of your customers? Like what kind of base do you have? Like, because it kind of, this road looks kind of out there, but it's not that out there. Like it's not really out no, there. It's, a, it's actually right off of I-95, um, which is right off of 20. So. Okay. You're right there. We're within about five minutes of the interstate, so oh, that's, that's really perfect. not too bad. Um, as far as Columbia, uh, downtown Columbia is roughly an hour and fifteen, depending on traffic. Yeah. Um, but we're also looking at you know customers from the Myrtle Beach area, you know, south from Charleston, Fayetteville, things like that. So. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, directions for me. It's about two hours, two and a half hours, which, you know, it's yeah. going towards Myrtle Beach. Um, yeah, that's not far. I mean, for me, that's not too far for... for what uh, what part of uh, South Carolina are you in again? Simpsonville. It's uh, by, right Greenville, near. by Greenville. Yeah, yeah just south of Greenville. Mm-hmm. That's okay. not, I mean, that's not too bad. You're probably the same drive-ish as Charlotte, essentially, at for yep. better or worse, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's far. Yeah, it's taking me down, uh, down twenty six through Columbia, and then straight over on twenty, and then yep. ninety five. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a doable, doable trip. I mean, that's kind of what um, GTI is about. That from here is uh, about two yeah. and a half hours for me. Yeah. I've been wondering how far GTI is from the field. Let's look it up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually a smart, a smart, uh, a smart idea. I, I don't know why. Ever... Uh, it can't be that see. far. Yeah, oh. right. Government Training Institute. Here we go. I'll pull it up on screen for you. I want to say it's probably about an hour and a half. It might be. It is two and a half hours. Same for my oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Everything's two hours away. Uh -huh. So GTI <laughs> is two hours away <laughs> from us. Well, isn't this point just an enigma? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so near. What is the closest? Thing? Okay, so we're near like Lumberton. I just seen that. 
Uh, that's probably kind of far, but it's not that far. So North Carolina? Yeah. Yeah, Lumberton, yep. Are you guys by Lumberton, where you're at? I th I think so. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like if you take, uh, what is that, 95 all yeah. the way up to... I mean, where to, you're at in uh, what part? You're by Charlotte? I'm by Charlotte, oh, but okay. I, I think okay. Lumberton is probably slightly closer than the field is yeah. for me. Yeah, here's Lumberton. I'm literally in Ballantyne, so you see where Pineville is right there. I'm yeah. like kind of close to that area. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so you're not far. Yeah, you're about the same distance to me as you are almost to the field. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, so good it's location. Like a, it's like a two-hour spread. Good location. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be a terrible location if it was a Harley dealership. Um, it was but, a laser tag place, too, that apparently did really well. Really? So that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, they, they apparently did laser tag in there, to my knowledge. Either, was that the old building or this one? I'm trying to. I'm pretty sure it's this building. I can. I'll, I'll confirm that before I say something that I'm going to regret. On <laughs> no, that, that that was a that was a different location that we were talking about trying. Uh, to get. Oh, oh, see, yeah, okay, I remember I'm that. glad you correct me there. When uh, yeah, yeah, when you and I talked, Chuck, about the um, when you guys were searching for, there was like a. I remember one of the f places you guys were looking at was really big and. Um, but it was just, yeah, it was the old school. Uh, yeah, the old school. Yep. That's right. I, I asked just to be sure. Cause I feel like I heard that from somebody for Florence. Um, but I'm confirming that now just that to make sure I'm an idiot, which is totally, totally possible. <laughs> um, that's what we do on the show. That's the best thing yeah. we do on the show is show how that's, dumb we all are. Okay. I mean, dude, I do it all the time. <laughs> Chris actually did find that building that you're talking about, and it was in mm. Florence, but it wasn't this building. Oh, okay. It was not this building. Okay, but apparently the laser tag place was close, right? Like to where we yeah. are. Mm. And yeah. apparently that did really well, which is good. That's a good sign for us, but COVID shut them down. Yeah. COVID kind of ruined uh, a lot of people's small business, I think. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, big time. Oh, yeah. Nice. But okay. that's a good sign, though, because, I mean, if, if I feel like kids will enjoy, you know, playing airsoft equally, um, and especially something that's this fast paced where you can get in there and enjoy a game or 10 and get out or whatever, but yep. it's not yeah, I mean, hot. We got it. You know, it's air conditioned. It's heated. It's that's the other thing that's that's fun about this. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. A anybody that's been to the old field will very greatly appreciate that. Oh, yeah, the, the, oh any <laughs> AC, the indoor man. field, man, most of the indoor fields are like uh, warehouses or, you know, warehouse Ox, setup. Man. So they're not, they're not AC'd at all. And, and I uh, mean, yeah, that's fine. Like, and, and the thing is we might run days like that where it's kind of hotter in there, sure. but if, if it's not, if it's not 300 degrees outside, but if it is 300 degrees, we're probably going to definitely use, I mean, we might as well use the, oh, AC. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you have the opportunity just open up the bay doors and let the air flow through and it's good to go. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, uh, yeah, it's been great hearing about this, uh, new, uh, field look, uh, looking forward to all good things coming out of this, uh, field. You got to, you know, in Florence, it's a good location. Um, a lot of people in in the Florence area. Um, you know, it's, it's even not too far from Myrtle Beach. So, if you guys hold some bigger events, um, you know, you attract a lot of people out in that area. Yeah, yeah man. So, uh, so you guys got the one grand opening, and then do you have any? What's uh, what's the hours going to look like going forward after that? Are just going to be on the uh, weekends, or they're subject to change. But as of right now, it's uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Saturday. I lost him. Did you lose him? Oh, you lost. You guys got me now. I feel like I'm back in yep, there. Yeah, good. Now we do. Okay. Cool. All right, Saturday, I don't know so what go happened. Ahead and, uh, start over again. Uh, Saturdays are going to be what? Ten Saturdays are 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. Um, and that that's subject to change in the future. We uh -huh. might extend that or end or if you're there and it's crazy and we're having fun, then obviously we're going to extend those hours. Um, and then Sunday, same thing. It's 11 to 4. Gotcha. So, but the same concept. If it, if it's crazy busy and you guys want to play, you know, a game or two more, I don't think Sam or anybody's going to be like, no, absolutely not. Get out of here. Unless we're <laughs> literally like that busy or something. Right. But. 
We're trying to give as m- people as much fun and play time as possible in those two days right now, but we're going to extend hours at some point, like throughout the week. Yeah. We just don't like, we need that. The hard part is, is we need that funding to be able to yep. continue this. You know, this is getting to the point where we're, we're just, we're trying to really bring people in and, and get this exposure because we need to, Absolutely. we want to keep it alive. So, oh, yeah, that's the biggest thing with the business. You gotta, you gotta get the doors open, get it running like a business to uh, to be able to continue. So now what about um what about rule sets like um MEDs, uh FPSs or jewels, what kind of stuff you got? I think it's just stuck at a zero foot um for an MED, but that's all we're gonna probably do uh if anyone's been to Milsim, we're gonna actually follow the same kind of not one point five five jewels. I will get to that. Um tabs uh and we're gonna also use tamper tape to lock you know regs and stuff up. We're going to have your jewels written down on specific tabs that allow us to know what the zero is. But the, the standard jewel for semi-locked will be 1.3, and it'll fall within anything within that. And then the one and below, one jewel and below is a full auto. Oh, nice. So. Oh, you're going to allow, allow full auto. If you're if you're one jewel yeah, max, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't you can't go a freaking spick above. I mean, that's like... No, it, for it's sure. Just, but a lot you know. of fields don't allow full auto, and a lot of people want to use full auto. Yeah. Right? And I think, uh, uh, all, I think all we're the UK gonna, fields use full auto. I mean, if we had an entire field, this is what freaks me out about that. If we had an entire field full of SMGs, <laughs> it's going to be a, it's gonna be a nightmare. But, I, yeah, that would be cool to watch. People are going to be like, oh, God, <laughs> just this is... <laughs> Every BBs are everywhere. I mean, if it's big so, enough, you know, if you got the big enough areas to to run like that kind of stuff with covering fire, hey, you know, they're good. Well, that yeah. that was the thing too. Is like, uh, there's this huge controversy. Um, not going to get into this too much, but about like fanning triggers for speed softers and all this stuff, and people hating on this class of uh, player because of the way their guns function. And my thing is, if you spend a thousand dollars on a gun, you should be able to use it responsibly. You should be able to use it. Um, but if you want to fan the trigger and you can shoot, you know, 50 balls a second and you're not going to go in there and, you know, double or triple tap someone and you're going to be just sitting there like feathering your trigger, you should probably run at a jewel. You know what I mean? Right. You're shooting as fast as anyone else with full auto mm-hmm. um, or faster. And I'm sure um, we haven't completely solidified the rounds per second, but it's not going to be extremely insane like freaking 90 rounds or 90 balls per second or whatever but we're we're gonna be able to yeah we'll make it make sense yeah i mean literally like people are lassoing people by feathering the trigger so (laughs) um and and i'm all for that stuff where but some people you know we don't want like a rental to come in there and be like i'm never playing this again this kid so what about uh binaries they allowed to use binary i haven't talked to anybody about binary yeah Uh, chuck you want to you want to reach out yeah so uh, I think binary is going to fall kind of under that same thing. The, full, the just full say. auto thing, yeah. Yeah, because at should. that point... Yeah, one jewel. Yeah, you, yeah, you can... There's guns out there, HPA, AEG, it doesn't matter. You can very easily reach full auto speeds with a binary trigger. Hell, you can reach it with a regular style trigger. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're going to have to be below one jewel for that. Yep. I, I kind of agree with that. I, I feel like yeah, if sure. you're like walking the trigger like that and it's just every shot off on off on off on mm-hmm. you could probably very well shoot just as fast as anybody else using full auto they do <laughs> oh sure. easily they do yep I've n- i don't actually own anything with binary so i've never actually played I, with that that one right there one. i can yeah. i could turn it on in that one <laughs> nice. yeah that's that's i have polar stars and stuff i just don't have the fcu setting for it but yeah um and, and, and but we're trying to make this like a safe, fun place for everybody, but also not. I keep bringing this up a million times over, and like I, I mean this in such a nice way when I say it's not like I want people to be able to utilize their guns to the fullest potential while also being responsible. And obviously, not everybody's going to be responsible, so we'll yeah. have to, you know, get to that bridge when we get to it to cross it, but um. I don't want this to be like Chuck E. Cheese, Nerf sport. You know what I mean? I, I want you to, 
if you get hit, you know, that, that little sense of pain isn't going to kill you. You know what right. I mean? But I don't want kids lit up to the point to where they're crying and stuff either. For sure. So we're trying to find that happy medium to the adult player as opposed to the kid player. We might even do youth nights like a lot of these mm-hmm. other indoor fields do. So yeah. well, to, to kind like of the nerf thing and stuff, are you guys going to do uh, gel ball, gel blasters, or nerf things in the future? Nerf, for sure, yes, we've talked about that. Because Nerf does bring in a lot, especially with like younger kids. Right. Um, gel ball, personally, I hate gel ball. But... Yeah, I've never <laughs> – what is that? The gel blasters? That's what, what? They have to, that's what they have to use in Australia now because they banned Airsoft. I... Yeah, so, no, I know, I know you... what they are, but like why did they create this? <laughs> like, for, is... for Australians. That's really yeah. it? <laughs> well, it's for little kids. Well, there's multiple countries – there's multiple countries where airsoft is banned, and so they have to use like gel ball instead. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a mini. Well, you know, it's like that little soft. So it shoots uh, less hard. You know, it shoots softer than airsoft, and it's it's a little tiny gel ball that breaks. It's like a squishy. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I've seen uh, them they, before. They don't hurt. How would you? Do they hurt? I mean, how? They, you know, they still sting. Really? What? Really? Yeah. <laughs> then what? what the I mean, they're not as bad as it. Like, you're not going to get cut off of them necessarily, but they still pack a bit of a punch. That's crazy. I've seen, like, gel blasters that literally kind of look like airsoft replicas. Yeah. Um, but I the would only real difference be... between The only real difference between a gel ball and an airsoft gun is the size the of the mess. <laughs> And the mess. And, yeah, the mess. Right? Yeah, everything's wet. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is like, is it just water, or is it like, I don't know. Don't what they have to it? soak the them in water? I don't even. know. Yeah, you gotta soak them in water. <laughs> that's so crazy. That's dude. obnoxious, dude. I, I so mean, like Nerf but, and airsoft. There you go. And yeah, simulation yeah. for yeah. simulation yeah, or whatever it's I, called. I have other reasons why I don't like gel blasters. The the rounds, especially like. If you have like little kid, like real little kids or animals, they can actually be really dangerous for them. So, oh, okay. Like there's yeah, there's, there's been there's there's been little kids that have died because they've ingested it and it blocks. That's not funny. Why, I'm not laughing. Um, so, I was gonna, I was just about oh, to so talk about the inside them. is toxic. It's not toxic. They swell and they start blocking like your intestines and shit. Good oh, lord. Man. Yeah, what? like there's there's been a lot of problems with them. Oh what? God! Definitely don't yeah. have that on your field. What the hell? God. What bad parents <laughs> are letting God. their kids eat gel balls? <laughs> so that's the new thing. Like, uh, you know, remember it was a few years ago. Was the eating the Tide Pods? <laughs> you know, it, well, oh my just God, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I, you know, I've actually thought about this this a lot. Um, just because I'm supposed to be getting married in November, and we, we talk about like, you know, we talk about kids and stuff like that, and I'm like. God, I have so many dangerous things floating around right now that just <laughs> corners and I don't know. Like, I, my kid's going to have to wear my helmet or something. Like, I, like <laughs> you just teach them, man. They're fine. They're, they're, yeah. 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 They bounce back yeah. pretty good. We had five. With the airsoft five, BBs, they, they though. They bounce off of stuff. They, you know. So you'd be surprised how little of an issue that can really be. Um, my kids, I, I, actually use airsoft to teach them gun safety and whatnot. Now they have their own little guns and stuff. Um, It can be a good tool to keep them safe if you do it right. Yeah. Yeah. But if done wrong, it can be bad. I'm guessing. Watch your kids. Like the big thing is like um, poison stuff, you know, under the counter stuff, you know, Uh, drinking, whatever. Do not. Some kind of thing. Yep. Stay away from Ajax. That is bad. Ajax. (laughs) Mr. Clean. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know I don't know the the kid thing so much right now. Um, but what I will say is is it does it definitely that's that makes sense to where they're worried about people eating gel balls and airsoft <laughs> BBs are like small enough to be ingested, obviously. So yeah, uh, yeah definitely watch had, out for your kids. Yeah, we had um, you know with all the videos we filmed out here in the back, we have you know tons of um, airsoft. Um, BBs out there on the ground and just laying around, you know, wherever, stuck in the little cra- uh, cracks in between the wood of the deck. And when our grandkids start coming over, you know, and they're like two or one and a half and they're walking, you know, they're real close to the ground. They can see all those little things. They start picking them up and like, oh, 
nope don't don't put that in your mouth you know right you can't chew that no. <laughs> yeah so you're so not, that's exciting you're getting uh you're engaged you guys are getting married in uh end of the year yeah november 13th no no um no significance to the number but <laughs> <laughs> Is that we're doing that in, in uh, <laughs> It's uh, it, it's a thing. I'm, I got thirteen like all over me. I don't know. Yeah, um, Raven thirteen. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's on my wrist. Okay. It's uh, I have a hand tattoo of a raven. All it's a whole thing. Nice. Um, but uh, there, there's a whole. I, I'm not gonna get into that part because this is supposed to be ASC, not Raven thirteen. Uh, <laughs> talking about hand tattoos, but mm. yeah, the thirteenth of November in Colorado. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully, it's snowing. Oh, and sweet. Then, okay. Oh, yeah. No, no, no children were conceived on that night. I'm going to call that now just because I'm, <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> so, That's funny. Oh yeah, man. Congratulations. That's for sure. Cool. Thanks dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in my life right now. That's for sure with this field and then my actual, right. like my day job and then trying to manage like posting stuff and then also talking to people. And then mm. uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy. I feel like I'm, I, I go to sleep and I wake up uh, not even realizing that it's tomorrow, you know, like I, every day just kind of <laughs> literally runs together. Like my, mm. my Wednesday, I'm going to be thinking about what we talked about today on Friday while also thinking about what's going on next week. Cause I oh, have yeah. an event with my team does one event a month. Um, so I think I told you that in the last podcast, we were literally at an event per month, rather it's TCA lion claws, uh, American Milsim or Milsim West. We haven't done a Milsim West together yet. Um, but uh, we're trying to hit one a month, and it's really, really difficult to to juggle, sure. you know, an airsoft field, uh, a full time job, a fiance. Uh, <laughs> this dude, uh, it's uh, yep. I'm pretty much I pretty much figured out that I'm not a robot, and uh, I, I don't know. Well, that's <laughs> why, a- that's one of the biggest reasons I don't travel a lot for these events. I have so many people on here that you know, almost everyone I have on invites me to. Hey, are you going to this? Hey, I'd love to meet you over here. I, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm, I had to limit. Uh, when we first started the channel, I was putting out. I was stuck at home. I couldn't get out of the house. I couldn't walk right. very well. Right. So yep. I, uh, I was putting out three videos a week, and it's a lot. Uh, like unboxings, reviews, like all these, you know, short videos, or whatever. And it was, um, and I was learning how to edit. So I had a lot of time to do all that kind of stuff to put all that into it. And then, uh, but now it's yeah, full time job. Running this, I do. I still run uh, this channel, CNR Reviews. Um, I still post on there, which is a review channel. Uh, and then, um, I, I mean, just all the posts on Instagram, all the social media. Oh, dude, media you got stuff. a lot of editing to do. And then edits with it. Luckily, the podcasts are really easy to edit because I don't really cut anything out. You know, like uh, right. when we were waiting for you, so me and Chuck were talking. Like that's gonna get that'll probably get cut out until the beginning of. What, when we all started and that'll be put on the behind the scenes stuff for members so it's kind of cool, oh, cool. You know? so but that that's about um most of the editing the most of the editing comes from the shorts if i'm going to do like a short video you know so those are easy. yeah it's a, it's a lot dude I, I i couldn't imagine trying to do multiple like channels um even though that's what i'm doing um, <laughs> i know right <laughs> exactly so. Again, it's it's hard to manage like three Instagrams. Like I, I'm not really trying to. I, I don't really care as much about the war crime page, but I feel like it gets a lot of um, exposure from the Raven page, which those kind of talk to each other, and then all the other members are Raven, and then you know ASC CQB is now this new baby that I have to start working with and mm-hmm. and making it what it's supposed to be. Um, and, and that's a whole separate thing because now it's business questions. It's no longer, hey, what event are you guys going to? It's, hey, when can I come play here or yeah. what FPS do you guys allow? What is this? And, I, and I'm sitting here like working with a client outside, nothing to do with Airsoft. And I'm looking at my phone like, oh, God, I got like 20 questions to answer now. <laughs> well, speaking <laughs> of that, is there, um, before we wrap up, what um, where can people go to find information on the field, the times? The uh, if if the times change, like if you're gonna open up for a certain you know day, or can they schedule a party? Where can they find all this information about all okay. that you know jewel limit and everything? All right, so the rules are actually on the website. Um, so you would go to airsoftsouthcarolina.com. There's literally a rule section there. 
Gotcha. Um, however, if you are on Instagram, um, or if you're on X or what Twitter, whatever you want to call that now, there is a link tree and a link and the address and all that stuff is laid out. So if you go to the Instagram, we have links that literally take you straight to the website. Links that literally take you to the uh, rather it's whatever you need. All that stuff's on our link tree right up front. Uh, but the website will tell you everything. So airsoftsouthcarolina.com. Gotcha. Um, the the biggest problem we're having right now is getting that Google listing to show like when you type in I don't know airsoft South Carolina it's still popping up as Columbia so we're trying to like mm. stop that that's not good that is really bad so we're trying to fix that so if anybody's listening to this make sure that you you do the the TV Road location not the Columbia yeah, location exactly <laughs> that's super important yeah, yeah you well, can find if you if you search on the Google Maps you can find the mm -hmm. right location it's just if you do a normal yeah. Google search. It's like if you did it on your iPhone, which the the can like you know you bring up your iPhone and go into Maps and type in Airsoft South Carolina, it pops up in Columbia, and that's that's uh, not we're trying to so we're working on that. But it originally the old field was there. It's like a whole Google is not very friendly with us about that. So well, we get you know if if you get uh, you post your your new link around, then people just click on that. It's a lot easier than them searching the stuff anyway. If they already have a link to click on. You know, it takes them right there. So we'll have right. all those links and, you know, in the, in the uh, description of this video too. So awesome, dude. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. really good. That way it makes it easy for everybody. Right. Oh yeah. Well, easy been, is uh, key. It's been great talking to you guys, man. It's uh, great to catch up. Uh, good things coming out of Florence, South Carolina with the uh, new field. Uh, looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to coming down there. I, I won't be able to come down for the uh, grand opening, but, um, Definitely uh, sometime this year be able to make it down for an event. That'd be great. Dude, we'd love to see you. Let us know when you're coming, and we'll um, we'll make it a big thing and get some videos, pictures, whatever. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Appreciate You'll have to drag the guys, guys out of retirement and drag them with you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, I was telling him yeah. earlier, uh, Raven, uh, that um, the guys, I, you know, my two sons and their friend, JP, they haven't played Airsoft in over two years. So... It's, really? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, they got to come out and play, man. I, I was gonna mm -hmm. actually say, I was gonna ask you. I know you don't play very often, but yeah. um, or do you have you ever really played or? Uh, no, I still haven't really played. Uh, oh man, just you here, need to go out there here in the back. You need to go to like one of these events and just take I don't know twenty minutes and just go out there and <laughs> you know run up the hill of GTI and hate your life for a minute. <laughs> 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 dude i'm telling you gt gti it'll, it'll ruin your it'll ruin your oh, day if you sure, gotta run up right. that hill 500 times i mean oh you know God. you walked around it i walked around uh -oh. it i avoided those steep ones okay uh <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's bad especially if you're trying to run real plates like people that i know i'm not gonna i i run real plates now and that is uh that's a that's a humbling experience you I'm know sure. uh, Especially for eight hours at a time, so <laughs> you, I, I feel like you don't want to do that far, anymore. But he, he, uh, he's done it, you know. Yeah, I am you far too fat and lazy for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, fun. man, it's been great talking with you guys. I appreciate you guys so much. Yeah, uh, we'll get the word out. Everyone watching, listening, uh, definitely go to their website. You can find their website uh, real easy in their link tree on their Instagram account, uh, and I'll have a specific link in the description of this video. Also. The uh, grand opening is uh, March 13th. No, March 23rd. 23rd, sorry. Yeah. Um, March 23rd, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can, uh, I'll post the link for the discount code uh, for watching the podcast and following us and you guys on our uh, socials and everything. So awesome. Sick. Yeah, right. man. Appreciate right. you guys. Thank you. Yeah, man.